Do you think everybody pronounces Orion as Orion in this one? Because Shatner recorded his dialogue first, and that's how he said it, so everyone else was stuck saying it that way, too, for consistency's sake? And if that is what happened, did Shatner do it inadvertently or intentionally? In other words, was it an accident or sabotage? This is a review of the Star Trek The Animated Series episode, The Pirates of... Orion. If you have not seen this episode and you don't want to know why iron-based blood is the best, be warned. Spoilers beyond this point. You know who else pronounces it Orion? Bruce Springsteen in the song Long Time Coming from his album Devils and Dust. Well, if Captain Kirk and the boss both do it, I guess it's okay. Oh yeah, the episode. The Enterprise is on its way to represent the Federation at the dedication of a new science academy on Deneb 5. Kirk notes in his captain's log that the crew has been dealing with an outbreak of a disease called choreocytosis, which is like a weaker form of pneumonia, for humans anyway. On the bridge, Kirk is talking to Spock about their mission to the science academy, saying it'll be nice to play diplomat for a change, won't it, Spock? Spock? When you grimace and collapse like that, does it mean you agree with me, or...? They take Spock to sickbay, where McCoy diagnoses him with choreocytosis. It turns out that while it's no big deal for humans, it's a very big deal for Vulcans, due to their inferior copper-based blood. Take that, you smug bastards! Let's see you outthink hypoxemia! Anyway, Spock's gonna die unless treated with a drug called strobilin. The nearest supply of strobilin is four days away at maximum warp, but Spock doesn't have that long. So Kirk arranges a little interstellar medicine relay. The starship Potemkin will pick up the drug from the nearest planet with a supply, hand it off to the freighter SS Huron, which will then deliver it to the Enterprise, hopefully in time to prevent Spock changing addresses from his cabin to a drawer in the back of Dr. McCoy's office. McCoy treats Spock with a synthetic drug that will slow his symptoms from progressing, but that'll only last a couple of days. To help him out, Kirk orders Spock to work a reduced schedule. Spock protests, but Kirk and McCoy insist. When Spock leaves after a meeting with the two of them, McCoy turns to Kirk and says, As much as I'm always hoping he'll die, I hope he doesn't die. Meanwhile, on the SS Huron, which is on its way to meet the Enterprise with the drug, the helm officer, who absolutely sounds nothing at all like Sulu, reports that there's an unidentified ship closing on them rapidly. When the ship catches up to the Huron, its captain demands that they surrender immediately or be destroyed. The captain of the Huron sends a distress call to the Enterprise, which Uhura receives. The Enterprise arrives at the Huron's location and... By the way, what is up with the design of that ship? Is it possible to have a kit bash in a cartoon? Apparently. Spock collapses due to his advancing case of choreocytosis. Kirk asks Lieutenant Eriks for a status report on the Huron, and he's like, The Huron's engines are dead! It's running on emergency power, Captain! However the fuck he talks. Kirk beams over to the Huron with an away team, and finds the crew seriously injured but alive, and the ship's cargo hold empty. No drug, and none of the shipment of dilithium they were carrying either. Eriks discovers a radioactive trail left by the attacking ship, and Kirk orders Sulu to set a pursuit course. They track the ship to an asteroid belt, where Eric says, I recognize the ship's markings, Captain. It's an... <sighs> Orion. The Orions hail the Enterprise, and the Orion captain is like, Hey, what's up with chasing us all over the galaxy anyway? We resent that. We come from a neutral planet. And Kirk lays into him like, Neutral planet? What about that shit you people tried to pull back in the original series where one of you pretended to be an Andorian to sabotage the Babel Conference? I demand that you allow us to search your ship. Nope. Sulu informs Kirk that he's detected the Hurons' stolen dilithium in the Orion cargo hold. If they've got the dilithium, they've probably got the drug, too. Kirk says to the Orion captain, Hey, look, we know you ripped off the Huron. Their cargo also included a drug that we need, like Pronto. So if you agree to meet with me and hand over the drug, you can keep the dilithium you stole, and we'll even throw in a little extra dilithium from our supply to sweeten the deal. What do you say? 
The Orion captain agrees, but insists that it be a face-to-face -face meeting with Captain Kirk only, held on the surface of one of the asteroids. After Kirk concedes to these terms, the Orion captain meets with the rest of his crew, and he's like, okay, so if these assholes blab to the Federation about us out here stealing from ships, it'll fuck up our claim to neutrality. So what I want to do is beam down to that planet, wearing an explosive on my back, and when the time is right, I'll detonate it, and it'll blow up the asteroid and the Enterprise and also our ship. Everyone here will die, but it will serve the interests of our planet, so technically we'll win. Sound good? The other Orions are like, sounds great, we're all fanatics, I guess. So both Kirk and the Orion captain beam down to an asteroid wearing their force field belts. The Orion captain hands Kirk the drug. Then he's like, hey, guess what? I've got a bomb strapped to my back, and when I detonate it, everybody dies. But right as he says that, Eryx detects the bomb with the Enterprise's sensors, and Scotty, in command of the ship with Kirk gone, orders the transporter chief to beam up both Kirk and the Orion captain before the bomb goes off. They go to the bridge, where the Orion captain takes out a pill and tries to put it in his mouth. Kirk's like, stop him! He's trying to kill himself! The Orion captain is like, chill out, man, it's just a time-release Benadryl. I've had a sniffle ever since you beamed me up here. Have you checked this ship for black mold recently? Kirk contacts the Orion ship and says, I have captured your captain and thwarted his attempt to take the coward's way out. Surrender immediately. Also, we're going to tell everybody what a bunch of pirates you are, so you can forget about being neutral from now on, you jerks. The Orion captain signals to his crew to do as Kirk says, and the Orion ship surrenders. Later, with the Orion crew in the brig and the Orion ship in tow, Kirk visits Spock in sickbay, who has been treated with the drug and is now feeling well enough to bicker with McCoy over whose blood is better. Spock is like, despite my copper-based hemoglobin being responsible for my grave condition, I still prefer my physiology to yours. McCoy laughs like, ha ha ha, good old Spock, stubborn as ever, refusing to admit that I carry superior blood. The end! As is the case with most of the animated series, the Pirates of Orion is a fun diversion. It's nothing special in terms of art or drama, but it's a perfectly fine way to spend 23 minutes. It's as well plotted and paced as any episode of the animated series, in fact. The story is simple and focused. Spock gets sick, the drug he needs is hijacked by pirates, Kirk has to track down the pirates and get the drug before Spock dies. There's no B-plot, there's very little padding, and there are a couple of twists to keep things interesting. First, the hijacking of the Huron's cargo by the Orion pirates, which we kind of expect from the title, plus it's only natural to assume that something's going to happen to throw a wrench in the works before Kirk can pick up Spock's medicine. And second, the Orions themselves turning out to be not only pirates, but zealous nationalists to the point that they're willing to blow themselves up to protect the reputation of their planet. Granted, that second twist is resolved with an almost laughable amount of ease. Scotty literally just beams them up before the Orion captain can trigger his bomb. But for a half-hour Saturday morning cartoon, it's not bad. In order to set up the treachery of the Orions, the episode cuts to a few scenes presented from the point of view of the aliens, a rarity from Star Trek, and a technique somewhat reminiscent of the classic original series episode, Balance of Terror. I'm not for a moment suggesting this episode is anywhere close to being in the same league as Balance of Terror quality-wise, but the scenes of the Orion captain discussing their next move with his crew made me think of the scenes in Balance of Terror set aboard the Romulan ship. These Orions are a lot less honorable than those Romulans, though both are extremely willing to die to avoid capture by the Enterprise. One of the entertaining oddities of Star Trek the Animated Series is the quality of the vocal performances. For most of the episodes, the main cast recorded their lines separately, whenever and wherever they had a chance, and, this being a filmation production, the supporting roles were mostly filled in by whoever happened to be around the production office at the time, or sometimes members of the main cast pulling double duty, or, in the case of James Doohan, triple or quadruple duty. That dude was 
always doing extra voices on the animated series. Watching the Pirates of Orion, I got a chuckle from the performances of the Orion crew. The actor playing the captain is clearly doing a voice, trying to sound like a mean, antagonistic alien, while the actor playing his second-in-command is just kind of talking like normal. So you've got this dynamic of a cartoon villain backed up by a subordinate who just sounds like some guy. It's a simple pleasure, but I enjoy it. And the same goes for the episode overall. Those are my thoughts on the Pirates of Orion. What do you think of this episode? Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, and I sure wish you would if you can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash steveshives, becoming a channel member by clicking the join button, or by making a one-time gift by clicking the thanks button, or via PayPal or Venmo. Links are in the description. Join me next time as this batch of reviews continues with another draw from the grab bag. We move on to Star Trek The Next Generation. The episode I'll be reviewing is The Vengeance Factor. That's next week. See you then. Thanks for watching and take care, everybody.